Moolah La is brought to you by the nonprofit credit counseling agency, Credit Canada. Getting laid off from a job can be brutal, brutal. There is the immediate challenge of paying expenses, right? Then there's the uncertainty about the future, plus all of the emotions coursing through your veins. So how can you best navigate this time of unemployment when it comes to your money? To help us answer this question, we're joined by Randolph Taylor, a certified credit counselor at Credit Canada. Hello there. Hello, Bruce. You have probably received, I don't know, tens, hundreds of calls from clients who have uh, been hit with this particular circumstance. What are some of the themes? Yeah. What are some of the themes that come up for people when they call? What are they feeling? What are they dealing with? Oh, boy. There's a there's a wide range of feelings. People are scared. There is people who have anxiety. There's even some shame. Sometimes mm. people feel that others will judge them because they don't have a job. So there's a wide range of feelings. Scared and anxiety probably are the two biggest ones. The unknown. They don't know what's going to happen next. So that's what's causing these, these themes. Having known you for as long as I have, I know that if they reach you on the phone, you are going to be kind, you are going to be empathetic, you're going to be a great listener, and you're going to provide some practical advice. So I, we're going to go down that path here in terms of uh, tips for managing your finances. Uh, first among them is the unemployment benefits, getting on track for that. Mm -hmm. What do people need to do in order to ensure that the, that check starts coming in? Yeah, so first off, just apply. As soon as you stop working, you put your application through, try to submit your claim within four weeks of becoming unemployed. An important point here is that EI does not apply if you voluntarily left your job, mm -hmm. only if you're laid off. What kind of proof does the government require on that front? Is there some sort of a letter or you just swear over a Bible or yeah. a bottle of whiskey? It's usually the ROE, the record of employment from your previous em employer, to fill out the required forms and they should be able to start to start that process. Next is to rethink your budget. And this is hard for people, especially if they've been living, you know, the same way for a long, long period of time and spending in the same way for a long period of time. What are some ways that people can um, manage fixed expenses first? Fixed expenses, I would suggest calling around to see what options your service providers may be able to do to give you a hand during this difficult time. So mm -hmm. whether it's a cell phone provider, an insurance provider, just reaching out to them to see what options, what supports are out there to put you in a better position to maintain the payments to them while your income is low during the period of unemployment. You know, an example of that may be because you're not working at this particular time. Maybe you're not driving as much. So if you're able to call your car insurance company and say, hey, you know, is there any option to drop my rate while I'm at home searching for, for a job? That can help to save you a few dollars right there. It's also important to prioritize essentials, you say, but difficult, I think, for all of us, regardless of circumstance, difficult sometimes to determine what is a need and what is a want. How do you make that call for yourself? Oh, it's tough. It's tough, Bruce. The first thing that I always tell my clients is let's define exactly what a need and a want are for you. Now, by my definition, a need is something that is necessary to live and to function. A want is something that can improve your quality of life. Now, there are some people that I've spoken to that Netflix is a need, mm. right? So yeah. it really, really just de depends. I, there are some people who will, you know, face the, the time of unemployment, but maybe they have a support in, in place. Maybe they have their family, their friends that can give them three meals a day for a few months to help them through. So although food is in theory a need, maybe for that particular person, they have that covered so they may feel hey i'll keep netflix on so i can keep my my stress le levels down so there isn't a one size fits all i will say just write down in your definition what are your needs what are your wants let's take a look at that and figure out what can be adjusted credit card payments are critical some people who find themselves without a job have you know for their whole life paid off their credit card mm. in full and other people have been struggling to make ends meet for long periods of time how, how what do you think people should do to think through how they at least 
make the minimum payment on that card? Yes. So um, reaching out, reaching out to the credit card company that you owe to explain what's going on, bring them up to speed to see, again, what supports they may be able to provide to bring the payments down or adjust the payment to the level that you can now afford being unemployed. That'd be a, you know, a good first step. If you're in the great habit of making full payments to your credit card, paying them off in full every month, maybe now that you're in a period of unemployment, maybe those payments can come down, not you know ever going underneath what the requirements are, but paying maybe a little bit more than what is required, but less than what you're paying before, those things can help. If you have student loans, you may qualify for a repayment assistance plan. How does that work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with the RAP or the Repayment Assistance Program, the government will pay any unpaid interest on the federal part of the student loan that your reduced payment doesn't cover. This is a great way to help a lot of folks who are in a position where they're not able to service payments for their student loans. Mm. Mortgage. Uh, is a big, big deal for people, um, not only because they want to keep the roof over their head, but because that's a real high stakes debt. You don't want to fall behind on that. Mm -hmm. yes. Sometimes it is possible to defer a payment. Yes. Uh, how Defer does that conversation yes. work? Yes. So um, just reaching out. So just as we, we just said with the credit cards, reaching out to the mortgage company to explain what's going on. There are deferments that they, they may be able to help with, which you know can put a sort of hold or defer the payment to an, another month. Oftentimes, a mortgage is one of the biggest payments in a person's monthly expenses. Having that deferred to another month can help you get through and just might be that little bit that you need to find a job and get you back on track. These questions that you're asking the credit card company, the mortgage company, uh, you know, the government on student loans, maybe utilities, you're calling and asking what can be done. Is there mm -hmm. any question to, or is, is there any connection between those questions and your credit score? Because further to your comment about shame, a lot of people would be terrified to pick up the phone and call their lender in case that was a hit to their score. Bruce, there is no hit. No, having a conversation on the phone will not impact the credit rating credit score in any way. No. So you don't have to say, hey, I have this friend and my friend just lost their job. You don't have to say that. You can actually be, no, be no. transparent <laughs> and talk about yourself. That's correct, Bruce. That's right. Yes. Just be upfront. Tell them what's going on. Only missed payments or not maintaining the card, the mortgage, the, you know, the, the obligation as agreed can then result in the creditor, whoever that might be, reporting to the credit reporting agencies about the lack of payments or the short payments, whatever it might be, which can then impact the credit score. But mm -hmm. making a phone call, perfectly fine. Cash flow is made up of two things. One is the expenses, but of course the other is income. And some people think, okay, like I've been laid off from my job job, but maybe there's a way that I could um, fill in the gap. And I know it's kind of a cliche to say, well, you could just go drive for Uber. What's your mm -hmm. perspective on whether it makes sense for someone to pursue a gig like that? Yes, yeah, so I think we need to look at the financial landscape of that particular individual to see if that's going to make sense or not. Like going back to the example I used er, earlier on, person A becomes unemployed, but they have family or friends that can help them with groceries, help them with a few things. Maybe the income that they are receiving from EI will be sufficient to service all of their living expenses. They can focus all their time and effort at getting a new job because finding a new job can be in itself a full-time job. But on the other side, if the income that is being received on EI is not sufficient to maintain the obligations as they be become due that a person might have, then yes, finding another source of income, whether that's Uber, Lyft, whatever it might be, just to get you through can be a good thing. Keeping in mind, there can be some tax impl implications, which we won't get into now, but those are things to keep in mind as well. The Banks do have some level of discretion on the interest rate that they charge people on their debt. Mm -hmm. um, if, you're, if you're trying to stack the deck, aiming for success for someone to advocate for themselves for themselves with a, with a bank or a lender, what would some of the uh, 
information be that they should have at the ready? What, how should they approach that conversation? Does charm win the day? Charm can't hurt, but it doesn't make the decision, no. Mm-hmm. So you, you, you want to ensure that, uh, I, I guess you have good information on the income sources that are coming in. Keep your credit score as good as it can possibly be. Um, you know, th- those are two main things that a bank or financial, I mean, there's, there's other things as well, but those are two big ones that the banks will look at or take into consideration. In the perfect world of rainbows and butterflies, <laughs> someone who has yes, been laid off, yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> someone who's laid off will find a job in short order. And sometimes it takes uh, a lot longer. It can take months and months and months. It could take even longer than that. At what point should people pick up the phone and call someone like yourself? What's the, they're listening to this, they've been laid off, they're in these tough circumstances. <laughs> How do they yeah. know when they should say, geez, I actually need more help? Yes. So I think a, a, a first or the first red flag, I think, uh, would be that maybe you're able to make payments every month. Everything is going well, but you're not seeing the balances going down. Another would be maybe you're just having difficulty maintaining the minimum payments required for the debt. Maybe you're getting calls from the, from the creditors that you owe if you're you know, receiving harassing calls. These are all signs that you need to pick up the phone and give us a call. You know, even if things are, are going well, give us a call. We'd love to chat. But uh, definitely in those three instances, it would be good to reach out. Randolph, thank you so much for your insight today. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Bruce. Randolph Taylor, Certified Credit Counselor at Credit Canada. And we were talking about how do you manage the money if you're in the unfortunate circumstance of having been laid off from your job. Hi, it's me, your debt. Look, we need to talk. This isn't working. The missed payments, the collection calls, and all those sleepless nights. We need nonprofit debt counseling, and I found the perfect place. Credit Canada Debt Solutions. They're non-judgmental, 100% confidential. They'll negotiate with creditors and even stop interest. Don't you want to rebuild your credit? You deserve better. Break up with debt. Visit creditcanada.com.